spirit worshiper. I want to talk about the two components of that. We talked about it as a relationship. We did deal with it. We de we dealt with it as far as the kinship. We dealt with it. We touched on it a little bit um, from our family members and generational curses and all of that stuff that comes against us as well. But we want to talk about it from the friendship standpoint because I know that we're wounded. Some of us are wounded due to friendships as well as relationships we go through. Um, with friendships as well. We get wounded. We get um, so entangled and so um, caught up with friendships. Our girlfriends that we share so much to betrayal, brokenness, bitterness. Come on. Some of us have shared a little bit too much with our friends. We've um, given them all of our conversations about the deep things of our um, personal lives. We shared openly with them. Um, we've kind of like brought them into some situations that we know we should not have brought them in, but we brought them into those situations. And then sometimes it gets crossed. It, sometimes it gets twisted. Um, we're going to talk about it. We're going to walk through it, but we're going to bring you all the way out. Okay. I'm not just going to leave you in the middle hanging, wondering, um, but I'm going to bring you all the way through, but let's talk about it because we do have some friendships um, at times that we get caught up in. And uh, we share some information with them, as I said. And in sharing that information, whether it's about your personal life, whether it's about your relationship with your partner, which is a big no-no, ladies, um, a big no-no. We're going to talk about that for a little while. Never do that. You know, um, the details of your intimate relationship with your partner should not be shared with anyone. Should not be shared with anyone. And a lot of times we um, step in over those boundaries and we share those deep things with others. And then we find ourselves in a place where that what we thought was confidential is no longer confidential. And sometimes depending on the person, depending on the person, I've heard the story, they end up with the person that you've been talking about. Yeah, you've been talking about how he's lazy, how he doesn't do this, how he doesn't do that. Um, and then you've been talking about sometimes just how good it is and how good he did it. And you end up sharing those de um, intimate details with um, people, your girlfriends, your family members, whomever it is. And they end up sometimes with the one that you thought wasn't enough. Come on, y'all know I'm telling the truth. We've had ladies that have shared it, um, what they won't do, what they will do, how good it was. And... They shared too much information and their girlfriend ended up, you know, not, wasn't a girlfriend at all, right? Wasn't a real true person, right? That ended up walking away with the person that they said that they would never be with. Girlfriend would amen you be in your amen corner and walk away with the one that you talked about to her. So we're going to talk about the wounded worshipers. We're going to talk about um, girlfriends as well that would betray you, betray your trust that you would share things with. But there's sometimes that you have to walk a thin line. You have to walk on eggshells, even with your friends, even with your friends. You get entangled in friendships and you feel like you share so much. Now they got to know the real you, but the real you can't be the real you all the time. It can't be the real you when you're around certain people. When there's certain people around, you have to pull back a little bit. That's how you know it's not authentic. That's how you know it's not really real. Because when the real you have to um, kind of be, you know, fine-tuned around whomever, whether it's their spouse, their boyfriend, their family, whoever, you can't be who you are. Matter of fact, they don't even want you to come around. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you become wounded. You become wounded because you have to act a certain way. You have to dress a certain way. You have to be a certain way, even with friendships, even with friendships. You, your girl. And when you're with your girl, you know, hey, that's your girl. So y'all know how y'all talk. Y'all cool. You know how to have yourself together. Because the thing that I share with you as a girlfriend, right? I'm not going to share it with everybody. The thing that I talk to you about, I'm not going to be like that in front of everybody. So don't step to me publicly with something you know that I've shared with you privately. And then you bring it forth in a public setting. That's not cool, girls. That's just not cool. Um, but we have to we have to understand to balance that thing out. But what I'm talking about is when you have someone that you know that's your girl, 
But then around certain people, they start acting a little funny. They start acting a little sometime. And things are getting a little different and you're wondering why. Um, it's because they, they, perhaps, perhaps they're showing face. Because they've been talking, you know, and now that the person is there, they don't they don't want you to act a certain way because they know they've already been talking about you to the person. So they've already known the whole scoop of what's going on with you, with all of your details and everything that you're doing. So now if I've been saying and sharing something and now I'm with the person that I've been sharing it with and you're in that company, of course, I'm going to be conservative. I'm going to be standoffish. I'm going to be a little quiet. That's what happens. That's what happens. But then, listen, girlfriends don't just talk to girls about what's going on. Sometimes they talk to their spouses. They tell their spouses what's happening with you, what's happening with your man, what's happening with your husband, what's happening with your children, what happened to you on your job, what you're dealing with. And then when that happens, when that happens, now... That person feels like they know you too. And now when homegirl want to hook up with you and want to go somewhere, want to do something, they can't go. Because they've already shared your intimate details. They can't go. That's why they had to block you. That's why they had to stop you. Because now their partner is looking at you like, hey, I don't really want you hanging with her. I don't really want you being with her. I don't want y'all connecting together because she may have some type of influence on you. She may have shared some things with you. She may be trying to take you someplace to do some things, you know, and now there's a trust issue there. Those are, those are things that we kind of like open up for ourselves. But we're talking about the wounded worshiper on tonight because you're wounded. You're wounded because your friend decided that they no longer want to be friends you're wounded because that relationship got ruptured and it didn't work out you're wounded because your parents that gave you all of that information that you thought was true that you thought was helping you and you found out that that was not true that was a lie you're wounded because perhaps your significant other betrayed your trust and violated your vows so you're wounded and what happens now when you come with your wounded broken self and you're trying to um, develop new relationships. You're trying to develop new friendships. You can't even get into a setting of where you can really, really come together and worship. Now you're not trusting. You can't even get in a, set, in a setting with women to come together to share with girls because you have some trust issues. You have some barriers. You have some walls up. Um, you've been so broken and so wounded now. You, you, you tr not trusting anybody around you. You're very guarded. You're guarded because of your circumstance. You're guarded because of all of the stuff you've gone through. You're got, you're guarded because you're so hurt. You're so broken because you trust who you should not have trusted. And those who you should trust now you're guarded. You're not even letting them in. You're so wounded that the right man has stepped into your life and he's trying to treat you right. He's trying to get closely to you and connected to you. But you're so wounded that you won't even allow him to come in. You camouflage your pain because you continue to work through all of the stuff that you've been through. You continue to work. That's a wounded worshiper. Do you know what happens when you get on the front line and those things inside of you are not healed? You have not um, brought all of that stuff out. You have not emptied yourself out to be healed and forgiven and set free and delivered. Now you're on the front line. Guess what happens? You work in with all of these battle scars. With all of these wounds, and as soon as you take a hit, you're offended. You're sensitive because you're guarded. You're super sensitive. You've taken a hit. And now what happens when you're taking a hit? You begin to contaminate everybody in your circle. Everybody. Ladies, how dare we come together together? And because somebody is not in agreement with another person, we feel like, well, they shouldn't be cool with you. They're not cool with me. <laughs> you know, we do that, you know, and then we stop trusting people. And, and listen to this. 
because that person has been affected by that person, then you feel like, okay, well, I don't want you talking to them anymore. Or you feel so guarded that you like, you have to walk on eggshells because you're not sure if they're going to like you going over there, if they're going to like you talking to them, if they're going to like you associating with them because you know they dealt bad with your partner, they dealt bad with your girl. Why do we do that? Why do we make other people pay for the things that have been done and it may not even be our situation is not even our problem but we make it be our problem and now we start judging a person based on what someone else said because someone else told you about her and someone else said something negative about her so now you have your guard up you on watch now and now that person that you really don't even know has come into your space and you're treating them badly. You're treating them badly based on some information that was given to you. Not something that was done to you. Not something that you knew firsthand, but based on what someone else said. You're wounded. You're wounded. And you're letting somebody else cause you to be crippled. Somebody else is, you're, you're letting, you're allowing that person all of the stuff that they're dealing with and all of the stuff that they've gone through affect you. Your husband, your boyfriend, your mom, your dad, whomever, your girlfriends get to pick the people that you affiliate with, that you associate with because they've been wounded too. And they've been so wounded and so guarded that now you can't even be allowed to make decisions for yourself as an adult, as grown men and women, as an adult, you're broken and you're walking around crippled. You're walking around crippled. And now, listen, now we're getting into the setting. What happens when you're wounded? What happens when you've been hit? You used to go to a hospital. You used to go get treated, right? Sometimes we go on and on and on forever, for a long time, going through the mechanics of it, just going through the motion of it, not even knowing. And we bring all of that stuff into our relationships, all of that stuff into our marriages, all of that stuff into our families. You can't even be intimate with your husband, with your spouse, with your mate. You can't even be intimate now. Because all of that brokenness, because you've been battered, you've been wounded, you've been broken, you've been bitter, you've been scorned, you've been betrayed. Now, your intimate parts cannot even function properly. Emotionally, you can't even think straight. Your mind has been so bombarded that you can't even let yourself go. You, you, you're so broken and so wounded, you no longer feel. You don't even know how to feel emotions now. So what happens? You medicate it. You medicate it. You deal with it. Whatever you deal, however you deal, you deal with it. Whether you're doing whatever you're doing, you're dealing with it. Okay? Let's just get a little up close and personal in your face. If you're drinking, you're dealing with it. You're smoking, you're dealing with it. Gambling, you're dealing with it. Shopping, you're dealing with it. Whatever it is that you have to do to get through, whatever it is that you have to do to make your way through this thing, you're dealing with it. You're coping. You're coping. You're getting by. You're working. You're working with it. You might work all day. You may put in long hours. You may do overtime, double time. You may be running to the casino. You may be online shopping. You're dealing with it. That's your coping mechanism because you've been wounded. Obsessive. Just constantly. Just going about it, not even realizing. You thinking that's your hobby now. You think that's just what you do for fun. You're dealing with it. That's your coping mechanism. Now you've gotten to a point now. You feel like somebody owes you. Somebody is going to pay. Somebody 
is going to be responsible for you feeling the way you're feeling. Um, so now you want payback. Now you want vengeance. So now you want to get back at the person because you've been wounded. You've been wounded. I told you wounded people go to the hospital, right? You find your hospital in whatever it is, whether you're, whether you're eating a whole lot, you're dealing with it. That's, that's your therapy. That's your therapy. What happens when you get into the church setting? Mm, wow, really? Because there's so much more people there. You're going to hear the word. You're going to get fed. But what happens when you get into that setting? And now it's time for you to worship. Now it's time for you to turn to your neighbor and show your neighbor a hug of love. Now it's time to give your neighbor a high five. And you're dealing with it. That you so wounded that you won't even embrace the person next to you. You're so wounded. You can't even lift up your hand. You can't worship. Because all the guilt that comes along with the scars and the tissues, the scars that are there, you feel so condemned. You feel so unworthy. Your mind has been swamped that it's just a battlefield going on. Now you have to try to find your way out of this thing. Heaviness, stress, depression, oppression, strife, anger, jealousy, bitterness, guilt, shame. Come on. You're all in. You're all in. You're all the way in. And the spirit of offense, we talked about it. You're dealing with being offended. You're carrying that thing. That thing is heavy on you. You have to unpack that. Remember we talked about the unpacked baggage? You have to let it go. You have to let it go. You're so busy trying to see how you're going to get back. How you're going to win this thing. How you're going to bounce back. We're going to talk about it. I can't wait till we talk about suitable companionship. I can't wait till we get there. We're going to get there on next week. But we need to get healed first. We need to get set free. We need to get whole first. We need to let go all of this stuff. We need to let go the offense. The wounds that we've had that we've carried around so long. You've been medicating that thing for years. You have, you've been medicate, you've been medicating that thing for years. You've carried that thing for so long. You didn't even realize it. You didn't even know it was there because guess what? You ignored it. You never dealt with it. You just kept going. It happened. You hurt. You put a bandaid on it. You were angry and you medicated it. And you kept moving. You kept moving. Now fast forward. Years later. You still have to deal with it. Because you never dealt with it. In the past you did not deal. So now. Wounded worshiper. Broken on the inside. Where is your alabaster box? I'm getting deep on tonight. I didn't try to go all churchy tonight. I really wasn't trying to do this, guys. But where's your alabaster box? What do you have left to give? What do you have left to pour? What do you have left to offer? Absolutely nothing. You're empty. You're depleted. You're on E. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Good. Good. Because that's just where you need to be now. You need to be at that place where you're sick and tired of being tired. Where you, you need to be at that place where you know, where you've just cried your last tear. You, you've cried as much as you can cry that you don't have any tears left. You need to be at that place now. Where you, you've been hurt so deeply till now you're numb. You just don't even feel anymore. You're numb. You're so wounded, you're numb. The thing that 
they thought would have taken you out, you bounce back because you're numb, because you didn't even feel it. You didn't even let it get to you because you've been through so much that this too is nothing. You're wounded. You're a wounded worshiper. How do you become a wounded worshiper? Going through all of that stuff, dealing with all of those issues, facing all of those people, not even realizing that you're bleeding on the inside. You're bleeding and nobody else knows that you're bleeding because you're so cute. Put on a good face. You look well on the outside. You dressed it up. That mascara therapy is helping. You've gotten those brows on fleek, girls. Those lips are lined, but you're bleeding. Weave in place. It's, 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 it's straight, but you're bleeding. You're bleeding. So now, I always bring you full circle right back to where you need to be. And that's to deal with you. Deal with you. After you take off the mascara, the lashes, the weave, take it all off. Take off the makeup, take off the enhancers, take off the lifters. You all know what I'm talking about. Take off the waist trainer. Take it all off. Because it's time for some work to be done. And with all that stuff that we cover up with on the outside, we won't get any work done like that. Because we hold on to it. We figure we need it to help us get through. We're wounded. You know when you know when you're healed? I'm going to tell you. You know when you're healed first. When you can look at you and love all of you. That's how you know when you're healed. When you can look at you and you don't see the flaws in you. But every part of you, you love it. Every roll of it, you love it. Every flaw of it, you love it. Where you think there is, you love that. Where you think there was, you love that. That means whether you want to be where you are and you have not gotten to that place yet, you still love you and you know you have some work to do. That's when you're getting ready to get back. You got to fight your way back. You got to crawl your way back. You got to scratch and claw your way back. You got to be like, you know what? If you get mad at the right person, you know who the right person is. The right person is not the person that hurt you. The right person is not you. The right person is not those things that everybody else allowed and if they wouldn't have done that and they would not have said that and if my mama would have told me this and if that wouldn't have happened if my uncle wouldn't have touched me if he would have left me alone and if that person wouldn't have heard me my girlfriend wouldn't have done that all of that get mad at the right person if you get mad at the devil if you get mad at if you get mad at the devil i didn't mean to be churchy on tonight Matters of the heart is not the church scope, y'all know. But I gotta, I gotta talk to you because I'm dealing with all types of women. Get mad at the right thing. Get mad at the right thing, and you know, when you think about it like that, you're ready to bounce back. You're ready to fight your way through. One thing that would be your strength that you would have to hold on to, let somebody tell you what you can't do. Let somebody tell you that you're going to stay down. Let somebody tell you what you can't have. When you get to that point that you know that you want to prove that person wrong because you got to prove it to yourself first because you know who you are and you know what you can do and you know what you're capable of and you know what you deserve, get there. Get there and get healed. Get there and move forward. Come on, girls.
you're wounded. You're wounded. But you got to bounce back. You got to get out of this thing. You got to be able to let this thing go. You're mad at the wrong person. Yes, you are. You're mad at the wrong person. So now, when you know who your opponent is, and you know who you should be mad at, now you have to take full control. You have to take ownership of that thing. You have to own it. You have to own it. As long as you're trying to make everybody else own what happened to you, as long as you're trying to force it on somebody else, as long as you want to blame somebody else, you'll never be able to get there. You have to own it. You have to say, okay, all right, that happened, but I am in control of myself. I am in control of my life. I own my own power. I don't give my power away to anybody. If you keep playing the victim, you're going to stay down. You're going to stay stuck. You won't ever come out. If you keep playing the victim, you're going to stay limping. You're going to stay crawling. But you have to be the victor. You have to say, I'm coming out of this thing. I'm bouncing back. I'm not going to stay down. I'm not going to stay stuck. I refuse to stay bound. I'm getting ready to rise up out of this situation, out of this state. I'm tired of saying the same thing over. I'm tired of dealing with the same old mess. I'm getting ready to move forward. That's the only way that you will come out. That's the only way that you will bounce back. Being on the front line, on the battlefield, and hit? Are you kidding me? You're bleeding? You're bleeding. And you're not going to tell anybody that you're bleeding? Sometimes, listen, sometimes we, we have to. We have to help. Holler help. I've been hit. I'm down. Cover me. Cover me. We're supposed to cover one another. We're supposed to cover our sisters. Come on. Are you kidding? You don't let your sister stay stuck. When you know that they're out, you pull them in. When you know that they've been wounded, you cover them. If we stop being so guarded, so intimidated, and so insecure that we won't allow another woman to come in and help us, come on. You have to know who to trust. You have to know who to talk to. You have to know who to go to. So I encourage you, ladies, to find an accountability partner. Find an accountability partner. Find a prayer partner. Find someone that can pray you through some things. Find someone that you can trust with what you have. Don't be so guarded. But use wisdom. Use wisdom. Don't share everything to the wrong person. Don't cast your, your pearls before swines. But use wisdom. Know who to talk to. In season. There's a time and a season for everything. Sometimes you may have to just go through and not share it. You know when. You'll know. There was a time that God told me to hide myself. He said, hide yourself that I might show yourself. And I didn't share a whole lot. But he showed me a whole lot. Some of our experience and the things that we go through, you already know. I told you before, it's not for you. It's for you to help somebody else get through. It's for you to help somebody else break through. And a lot of times we, we deal with things. And we have to know the season and the time. But stop medicating it. Stop putting a band-aid on it. Stop covering it up. Expose the stuff. Once you expose it, listen. Once you expose it, can't nobody else hold anything over your head. Can't nobody pull any covers over, off of you. You expose it. You expose it. Now, I'm talking about, ladies, I'm talking about when you're dealing with something and you know that person have offended you, what do you do? Hey, hey, pastor, how are you? You go to them. You go to them in love. 
If they've offended you, go to them in love and talk to them about it. That's how you expose it. Stop letting your imagination, stop letting all of the stuff in your mind take control. And you're, you're dealing with stuff and you can cast that stuff down. You can cast it down. Now, what happens when you go to them and they don't want to talk? They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to deal with you. They don't want you to come to them and ask them anything. Then you let it go. You let it go. You try. You let it go. And you move on. So, we're talking about the wounded worshiper on tonight. You're so wounded that you have a closed mouth that... You used to go to God and share and talk. You used to go to God and pray. You're so wounded that now you feel like you can't even go. You're so tired of going to him with the same thing because you went to him about that last week, last month, last year, last night as a matter of fact. And you're so tired of going to him with the same thing. But guess what? That's your daddy. If nobody else hears, he does. I will go to him over and over and over again as many times as I want to until he deals with me and I get my breakthrough. So don't you allow guilt, condemnation, shame, whatever, stop you from receiving all that you need to receive. Go to him again. Keep going to him. Knock and continue to knock and the door shall be open. Stop crawling around being broken and being scarred. Stop crawling around, wobbling in the pity. Bounce back. Bounce back. Look at yourself in the mirror. Speak to yourself. Encourage yourself. I love looking at me in the mirror. Not for vanity. I love looking at me in the mirror because you know you can really see the depth of you when you're looking at yourself. Don't nobody know you like you. And you know the things that you need to do. You know the things that you need to work on. You know what you need to fix. You know your error. Don't, nobody has to tell you. You really know. Nobody really has to tell you your errors. Nobody has to really come and tell you what you did wrong. Take time out for yourself and think about it. You know. So we're talking about the wounded worshiper on tonight. And if we if we deal with us, ladies, deal with us first, and we become healed and whole, I promise you, everything around you will change. Everything. The energy, the positivity, all of the stuff that you give off, the love, all of that would change. I was determined that I was not going to allow anybody and anything to stop me from loving. I'm just determined. I am determined. And I promise you, if I told half of you my story, you will wonder how I do it. You will wonder, how do I still forgive? How do I still love? How do I still hug? Why am I always smiling? You will wonder, how am I able to do it? I do it because I have a strong will and I have a made up mind and I'm determined not to allow anyone to take my power away, not to give my power away to anybody. No one has the right to control no one has the right to take your power. No one has the right to keep you bound. And that's what happens when you're unforgiving, unloving. That's what happens. So you have to make up in your own mind. Is it worth it to you, really, to let them have that much control, to let them have that much power, to give them all of that? Is it that much work to you where when your prayer life is, is hindered because you're holding on to bitterness and resentment and grudges and strife? Is it that much work to you to give it all away to somebody who is not even worth that? Absolutely not. You have to hold it. You have to hold it. And you have to keep it. So we're talking to the wounded worshipers on tonight gone through so much been through so much and now you're at that place 
Well, you know. That's right, Christy. Willpower. You at that place where you know. That you got to let it go. Are you going to stay stuck? Are you going to stay crawling? Are you going to stay limping? Forgive yourself. Forgive those who offended you. Forgive those who hurt you. I don't care how long it was. I don't care how many years ago. It doesn't matter. In order for you to get to where you need to be. You have to be able to be willing to let go. And you have to first know who you are. Forgive yourself. Forgive those that offended you. If it takes you going back to confront it, deal with it. You have to deal with it one way or the other. Let it go and move forward. Look at yourself in the mirror and see who you are. See your place in it. Own it. Own it and then overcome. Own it and then overcome. Stop medicating the problem. Stop having that mascara therapy, girls. You got to be able to deal with you with all the stuff. When all the stuff is off, you take it all off and deal with you. All right, my girls on tonight. This is Matters of the Heart with Mary Jane on tonight. I took you on a roller coaster and we went a little deep. I wasn't trying to be church on tonight, girls. I really wasn't trying to go there. We're going to talk about the suitable companion. We'll deal with that. Those of you that have not seen Unpacked Baggage, please go back and look at Unpacked Baggage. Go back and look at Brokenness. Go back and look at Ruptured Relationships. And we're going to deal with that. We're going to talk about the suitable companion. We're going to talk about rejection. We're going to deal with us. Let me say this. I had a young man ask me... Um, do I talk to the ladies about men? Do I tell you all about men and about what you should be doing? Um, I guess that's what he meant, like for men. And my 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 answer was no. I don't. I'm not assigned to do that. My assignment is to help women get free, to help women get healed, to help women see who they are. I don't have to come on here and talk to you guys about men. That's, no. I'm going to tell you about you. We're going to deal with us. We get us right, we'll be okay. If we get us right, there is not a thing, I promise you, there is not a thing that you would not be able to know to how to deal with your man, whether it's your husband, your your boyfriend, your father, your brother, when you get yourself together, ladies, you can deal with everybody. You can deal with everybody. Submission is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Mutual submission. It's wonderful. When you know who you are, you don't have those kind of problems. You know, you don't have to walk around with a chip on your shoulder. You don't have to walk around like you're, you're somebody in control and you're just going to be the boss and you're going to tell them this and do that. You don't have to deal with all of that. When you're right, you know how to love right. When you're right, you know how to care. We're nurturers. We're givers. We're feelers. We're emotional creatures. We know, but we have to deal with us. Yeah, we have to deal with us. So if we get right, We'll be fine. We'll let go of the offenses. And not hold on to all of the stuff that hurt us. Not hold on to all of the past. Let the past be the past. Let's, let's move forward. There's so much great things ahead for us. Okay? Hi, Hope. Ladies, do you have any questions on tonight? We can talk for a minute or two. You have any questions on tonight? I want you all to connect with Women of Treasure. Those of you that have not connected with us, go back and connect with Women of Treasure and like our page. Follow and share, please, on Women of Treasure. 
and also for real talk with mary j on mondays real talk with mary j on monday mornings at 10 a.m and then of course we're here on monday nights for matters of the heart at 10 p.m and i want you all to connect with me on wild wednesday we're gonna have a wild time in prayer um go to war women of the word women of worship women of wisdom wild w-o-w we're working out on wednesday that's what wow is all about working out our prayer light on wednesday so um i told you all i had a joke well it was it's not a, it's not really a joke but we're talking about the wounded worshiper i came on tonight i came from baton rouge today had a whole lot going on had an accident on the other day um it's 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 probably too much to get into tonight but i probably talk more about it on tomorrow for uh, i'm not tomorrow for wild wednesday but uh the devil is mad i'm gonna say that the devil is mad and i've been telling you guys that he's mad about it he's mad about it he's trying to block you stop you he would do everything that he can to keep you wounded to keep you bound to stop you from because you see when when you when you forgive when you let go of that stuff that's been holding you down for years that stuff that you were so offended by the stuff that broke you up that you thought you would never be able to come out you never thought you'd be able to bounce back you didn't think that you'd be able to move forward you didn't think that you'd be able to love through it if you really, I, oh my God, if you ladies get to a place where you can just see yourselves, look at yourself, I prom, I'm telling you, look at yourself in the mirror deep, deeply, look at yourself. If you got to stand in the mirror and stare at it until you cry, I bet, I bet you will see everything everything on the inside you see everything that you have not dealt with and if you deal with it if you deal with it if you gotta cry 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 let let the rivers flow tears are is is cleansing to the soul release it release it own it face it confront it overcome it and I'm telling you, you will be set free. You'll be so set free that you'll have a peace about you. You'll be able to treat people better. You won't be so resentful. You won't, you won't be so bitter. You won't be holding grudges and all of that. Just deal with it. The devil don't want you to let it go. He wants you to stay wounded. He wants you to stay bitter and stay broken. But I'm trying to get you free because I've been there. And guess what? I was so wounded so deeply. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. And and let me tell you this. I, I promise. I didn't have to deal so much with forgiveness. I didn't. I, I, I didn't have to deal with that a whole lot. I'm a very forgiving person. I don't like to go to bed with things and settle. I don't like to hold grudges and all of that. But let me tell you what I didn't know. I, I'm by, by nature, am a very ambitious person and very aggressive. So I work through a lot of stuff. I worked a lot. I multitask. I can do like three, four projects at one time. And I didn't realize that I was coping. I was using... All of the stuff that I was dealing with and I let my work be my therapy my work was my crutch my work got me through some stuff but but it only it only helped me cope it helped me cope it wasn't until um, some of things were pulled away I lost contracts I started losing stuff you know when those things were pulled away from me and I didn't have my work to hold on to, 
that's when I saw all of my frailties. That's when I saw all, because now I had so much time, I had to deal with myself. You know, I covered it up through the work. The work was my, my cocaine. Really, truly. Some people gamble, some people smoke, some people do drugs, some people drink, some people chase women, some people go on in, online and start searching the net because they're dealing with some stuff. They're dealing with some wounds. My work was my wound. My work was my crutch. And when I no longer had it the way that I had it, I had to deal with me. And I didn't even know all of the stuff that had been there for years. I didn't even know it. I didn't know it was there. And then I had to deal with it. And when I saw it, it was not pretty. Because what happened, I saw all of the wounds that I had covered up for years and years. All of the wounds that had been there so deeply that I just smiled my way through, hugged my way through, loved my way through it all. But until I went back and dealt with that stuff, that I was really able to be set free. That um, I didn't let it control the way that I thought, the way that I moved. Because a lot of times we are conditioned. We're conditioned by the way that we were brought up a lot of that stuff um we relate to people a certain way because of what we're used to what we're accustomed to the way we were reared we relate to people a certain way based on all of that um i had been so wounded and so hurt that I was too hurt to be angry, if that made sense. I didn't even have time to be angry. <laughs> um, I, I really, I don't even think I, guys, I don't even really think that I, that I was able to feel. I was so wounded that I no longer felt, um, I just didn't have emotions. I didn't even cry. I I went through yeah I never even cried. My mom said that she never seen me cry as a child. That's how deeply wounded I was. I've never even cried. And so um when you go through all of that and you come out and you've really looked back at the stuff that you really had to deal with and you pour out of yourself that's why i'm telling you i'm only telling you the stuff to help you it's the stuff that helped me it helped me i was able to deal with me i was able to release it um now i'm 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 a lot more compassionate i never thought that i wasn't but god showed me in some areas where there's a whole lot of other stuff that i had to work on with within myself so i'm able to deal with it in a different way i'm able to let it go you know um, to break free and to be a better me and you you become a better you when you see you if you see everybody else around you and all of the stuff that hinder you and who stopped you who blocked you who did this to you who did that who offended you if you keep seeing that you'll never get set free you got to see you in it and you got to see why you're in it and you have to see yourself come out of it and that's the way you have to break free stop putting a band-aid on those wounds Stop putting it. Stop having it to bleed. And um, just break free. Okay? You have to know when to let go. You might have to reroute. God rerouted me. You know? Um, I had to change some circles. Some people may not go with you all the way. Some people you might have to leave. You know? Um, some people in another season, you may have to regroup. You have to upgrade. You have to reach up. If everybody around you look like you, act like you, think like you, you need to change your circle. Because see, that, that happens to us a lot. A lot of times, we want to be with the person that's saying what we want to hear, doing what we want done. You might have to change your circle. Because they have to have somebody else that you need to be reaching up to. You have to reach up. Somebody have to, you have to be pulling up. You have to be pulling up. You can't be sinking down. You can't be going under. Because if everybody in your circle sounds like you, they're going to be responding the same way you respond. They're going to be dealing the same way you deal. They're not going to be able to help you because they're going to be stuck too. So you have to reach up. 
All right, ladies, we're getting out of this. No more wounded worshipers. We're going to be free, free in our prayer life. We're going to be free to love. We're going to be free to give. We're going to be free to function, free to be all that we can be. Step out of our box, do the things that we've never done before. Go places we've never been. We're going to be free, come on, to have new relationships, new friendships. We're going to be free to be open and not be guarded. We're going to be free to hear what somebody else is saying and listen. Listen so we can communicate, not listen just so we can have a response. Let's be free of all of that stuff. Let's be free. No more wounded worshipers. No more letting anybody dictate to us what we need to do, where we need to go, what we need to say, how we need to be, what we need to wear. Don't say this. Don't do that. Come on. You're your own person. Think for yourself. Be free of all of that stuff. You can bounce back too. Okay? Any questions on tonight? I never have it open for questions. I want to do that. We're going to talk about the suitable companion on next week. We're going to talk about rejection. Any questions, ladies, on tonight? Before I leave... Those of you that are still on and those who will come in and hit the replay, if this is your first time coming to share with us for Matters of the Heart, your first time coming to share, will you put a one up, please? Put a one up. Put a one up. Hi, Monique. Okay, ladies, I know most of you have already been on with us and have already shared with us. Okay, I'll talk to you ladies on Wednesday for our while and we'll talk about the little thing that I wanted to share with you. We'll talk about it on while, okay? This is Matters of the Heart, up close and personal for ladies only, the mature women. Um, those of you that want your breakthrough, that want to get through, we're talking about Wounded Worshipper Part 2. I hope you've been set free. I hope this has helped you. I hope you'll be able to go back, um, play the replay, look at it again, ladies. Go over it. Deal with you, all right, so you can break free, okay? Look forward to having you all connecting with me on Wild Wednesday at 10 p.m., so we can war on Wednesday and then on Mondays, on Mondays, up close and personal at 10 a.m. for Real Talk with Mary J. We're going to have a great show. Hey, Candy. Good night, ho. We're going to have a great show Monday, girls. So join us. Hope you downloaded the app for NOT in New Orleans Talk Network and download that app so you can have a happy Merry Monday with us on Monday. All right. Look forward to talking with you, ladies. Y'all don't have any questions, right? right okay don't forget um movie night if you all are a part of mary j movie club thank you for being a part welcome thank you for sharing with us um we're going to go see pink panther i'm saying pink panther jeez <laughs> we're going to go see black panther that's the second time i said that i told somebody you can tell when you have a, a children huh um we're going to go see black panther black panther on the 17th the 17th um that's a saturday at broad street theater in new orleans so those of you ladies that want to go you better get your tickets i've already gotten mine and then of, of course we're going to come together for our sit and sip once again all right monique you're laughing at me huh because i said pink panther black panther ladies all right see you all next week